Roger Casali joins us now from Florence in Italy. He's a former member of the British uh, Parliament and as well as the founder of the New Europeans, which is uh, an online publication focusing on European politics. Roger, good to have you on the show. Um, as you heard uh, in my discussion with Jack, um, you know, the issue of this export ban when it comes to vaccine, obviously it's not a unanimous one across the block. Um, and EU infighting... Uh, between uh, lawmakers is nothing new. I mean, we saw it in Brexit. Uh, we saw it over the curbing of sort of big tech and, and many more. But are you surprised to see it when it's something about that governs whether or not we live or die? Perhaps I'm being a little over dramatic, but you get my gist. Uh, good afternoon. I, I'm not surprised. The European Union has struggled in, to respond to the COVID pandemic from the outset, and it is finding that it is the prisoner of its own internal contradictions. It has a single market and competition rules, but it doesn't have a single health union. We need a European health union. It's one of the things that my organization, New Europeans, has been calling for. And so it has the worst of both worlds. It is trying to be um, behave like one state, but in fact, we can see it's very fragmented and there's a lot of competition within, within the states. I think also it, this, 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 there's a lot of misunderstanding about what is, it, what is causing the problem here. Um, there's been so much friction because of Brexit between the EU and the UK that your viewers might be forgiven for thinking this is something to do with Brexit. But I don't think it does have anything to do with Brexit. I think it has a lot to do with the EU's relationship, not so much with the UK, but with one of the companies producing the vaccine, AstraZeneca. And the UK got a better deal from AstraZeneca than the European Union did. And that's partly at the, at, at the heart of this problem as well. Okay, uh, since you mentioned AstraZeneca, uh, let me actually sort of bring up one conversation that I dug up. Uh, at one point, you had a German uh, member of parliament saying, you know, don't you think it's odd that the, uh, the EMA has twice now ruled out, uh, ruled that the AstraZeneca vaccine is fine? The conversation after that is, all right, hold on. You have national governments saying it's not fine for people who are over 65. And then all of a sudden, the French president, Emmanuel Macron, famously comes in and says, ah, it's quasi-effective. I mean, uh, coming back to your point that you need a health union, uh, it just shows you that point. It, it does show you that point. The, the European Union has got to learn the lessons of the global pandemic, and they've got to learn them quickly. And one of the lessons that the European Union needs to learn, and this is why New Europeans has been calling for it since the 9th of May last year, in fact, we made the first appeal, is that we need a European health union. You can't have it both ways when, you come to, when it comes to pandemic. You need a single authority that's deciding what's going on and is going to get a grip on the situation and uh, get things done quickly and uh, get, to get the vaccine uh, distributed, get things moving. Uh, but of course, as you've just uh, said in your report, member states suddenly have uh, their say and they interfere and it, it, it takes the response to the, uh, to the vaccine off track. And that's a, that's, that's a problem. The, the, the European Union doesn't have enough power, doesn't have enough authority as, uh, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a union level when it comes to responding to pandemics. Uh, it has a, a competitive marketplace, a single market, but it needs a European health union too. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, one country that plays a very powerful role uh, within the union, obviously Germany. Uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel is on her way out uh, probably um, uh, before the end of the year. How do you think uh, all this will be affecting how the union works? Well, it's very interesting you should mention Angela Merkel because she's just done a complete U-turn on this. She tried to say that there should be a lockdown uh, over Easter, and then she had to reverse that position within 48 hours. And she made an apology to the German nation. And why did she do that? Because she listened to citizens, she listened to scientists. She realized that, that you can't, as a, even as a 
powerful woman that she is, Chancellor of, of Europe, uh, just decide what needs to happen next. We need to have a health union also that needs to listen much more closely to scientists and to, uh, and to the citizens and to work things out in a clear way which has the consent of the public. And I think it's a real challenge for uh, Europeans that the virus doesn't respect uh, borders and the response to the, the virus needs to be a Euro European one, but all the time that is, in fact, it needs to be a global one. And that includes the production and distribution of, of vaccines as well. But the problem is, although you look at the European Union, you might think it's one union. At one level, it is one union when it comes to markets and money. But it's not a union. It's not one union when it comes to responding to pandemics. And it needs to change. It needs to learn the lessons and it needs to give itself those powers in the future so that it can respond to pandemics more efficiently. And we'll leave it at that point. Roger Cassell, thank you very much for joining us here on the News Hour. Uh, some excellent analysis. I do appreciate it. Thank you.